everyone, my name is Didem, and today I will talk about our work with Dr. Jeremy Clark. Our work is entitled Absentia Secure Function Evaluation on Ethereum. So let's start. Okay, consider a traditional setting for secure multi-part computation, where Alice and Bob have some data, they agree upon a function, and they would like to know the output of that function that they have chosen. They do not want the other party or anyone else to learn their inputs. In addition to this setting, they want to just submit their data to the system. It means that they won't do the operation themselves. There are non-colluding operators that perform the computation for Alice and Bob. We call these operators as trustees. And after executing the function using their inputs, the result will be ready when Alice and Bob come back. They can also trust the, that the result is always correct. They are willing to pay for this service, and they also accept that in the worst case, their inputs may be exposed if there is a full collision between the trustees of the service. So who are these trustees? And how are they chosen? There can be two options. One is similar to Oracle services like Chainlink. There are non-colluding Oracle specialists in providing this service. Here, the confidence increases if they offer legally enforceable terms of service. And the other one is similar to anonymous web browsing tools like Tor. Trustees could be picked at random from a large set of trustees and it is assumed that they don't collude. A secure function evaluation protocol can, in fact, operate perfectly well without blockchain, but blockchain adds value to the proposed system in at least three important ways as summarized in this slide. First of all, it is an integral point of coordination. Secure function evaluation needs a secure bulletin board and blockchain can act as one with its immutability and non-equivocation properties. This way, trustees can post and track progress. It helps compensating the participants for the work they do in a way that is based on their performance. And also, publicly verifiable secure function evaluation can be checked by the blockchain itself. So this means that users do not have to verify the function was executed correctly. And any proof that is not correct will be rejected. As a result, when Alice and Bob come back to retrieve the result, they know that it must be correct. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there waiting for them. So now let's go over some key decisions for our blockchain-based secure function evaluation protocol. Here are some details of our trustee model. As our protocol has the submit and go property, someone has to perform the actual evaluation of the function using the inputs. The entities that perform the function are called the trustees. And trustees are chosen independently of the number of inputs. In absentia, we require all trustees to participate in the protocol, which is an out of n, and they can identify the trustee that didn't participate. This can also be modified to let the protocol run with the threshold of the trustees participating, which is t out of n. One of the research questions that we ask is whether secure function evaluation is feasible on Ethereum as secure function evaluation uses heavy cryptography. Absentia establishes a benchmark for future research. For instance, Ethereum plans to address issues related to scalability, like more transactions per second. There are also layer 2 solutions like Arbitrum or Optimism that move blockchain functionality off of the main chain. We also benchmarked Absentia's critical components on Arbitrum, which is a layer 2 solution. The reason we have not chosen optimism is that optimism wasn't developed enough at the time. I will explain uh, absentia on Arbitrum in the upcoming slides. And 
For choosing a suitable secure functional relation or secure multipart computation protocol for absentia, we search for one with these properties. As explained in the previous slide, the secure function evaluation protocol should let input holders to offload their inputs to a set of non-colluding trustees for evaluation. We also look for a publicly verifiable protocol. We require that adversarial behavior can be detected by anyone. As a result, Elsambov can offload the computational work, and even if they do not directly participate in the protocol, they can still guarantee that the result they obtained is correct. They can also offload the verification to Ethereum. And we require identifiable aborts. If the protocol does not complete as required, anyone can detect which trustee has aborted. And lastly, as Ethereum has its own native support for its cryptographic operations on elliptic curves, we also prefer the same cryptographic setting for ease of implementation. That's why we have chosen mix and match, as it meets our purposes. We are also aware that the state-of-the-art multipart computation protocols are based on a different paradigm, which is initiated by speeds. Hence, the main alternative to our choice is speeds and systems that are based on it. However, except for one paper, the other versions aren't publicly verifiable. And in fact, it is an interesting future work to see if using speeds or a system based on it is faster than our current system. Having looked at our design parameters, now we can continue with the details of mix and match. In the pre-computation stage, a set of M trustees identified by public keys are chosen. Trustees use distributed key generation for creating the shares of the decryption key and the joint public key. All encryption is done under this key. The encryption scheme is additively homomorphic. In mix and match, a circuit of the function to be evaluated is produced using logic gates as lookup tables. The output of a table can be used as an input for another table. And all the zero-knowledge proofs are standard sigma protocols. For our implementation, we evaluated a single binary NAND gate, as NAND is the universal gate that can create any circuit. Our gate corresponds to a lookup table with two binary inputs, one from Alice and one from Bob, and a single output. First column is all the possible values that Alice can show up with. Similarly, the second column is all the possible values that Bob can show up with. And each element of the lookup table is individually encrypted under trustee's public key. At this stage, the encrypted table is permuted row-wise. So each trustee takes a table, mixes the rows, and re-randomizes each ciphertext and proves in zero knowledge that the result is correct. So now I will explain the plain text equality test, PET, and the online phase. PET takes two ciphertexts and compares them to decide whether there is a match or not. In other words, PET determines whether these two ciphertexts in fact represent the same plain text. In the online phase, Else and Bob provide their encrypted inputs. Trustees compute PET with Alice's input with each ciphertext in the column for Alice. And they do the same thing for Bob. So after all the PETs are performed, they determine the row that returned true for every input column. Here uh, in this slide, in this example, Alice has encrypted 1 and Bob has encrypted 0. And uh, as it is also highlighted here, the second row is the matching row and the output is the corresponding output on that row. So the encrypted output of this row uh, can be transferred as an input to the next gate. Or 
it can be decrypted publicly if it is the final output, or as a last option, it can be proxy re-encrypted for Alice and or Bob, which means that in this last option, uh, it is obliviously and verifiably changed by trustees from an encryption under trustees joint public key to an encryption in Alice's, for example. For simplicity, in absentia, we implement the option where the output is publicly decrypted. Let's have a look at the system design in absentia. The main contract of the system is absentia DAP. Elsa and Bob deposit their encrypted inputs and the required fees that will be deposited in the trustees' accounts at the end of the protocol. I will explain the payments in more detail later. Once Elsa and Bob deposit their inputs, they do not have to participate in the protocol, which is the Summit and Go property. Trustee 1 and Trustee 2 handle the rest. Some operations are public and can be performed by anyone. So that's why in our current design, we assume that Trustee 1 is the leader and performs these operations. This in fact means subst substantially more work for Trustee 1. We may address this issue by either balancing these operations between the trustees or compensating the leader more than the other trustee. The actual mix and match operations are done off-chain using the share of the private key. The output of each stage and the proofs are recorded by Ethereum, and proofs are also validated. Absentia DAP creates pet sub -dabs, as you can see here, and for our example with the NAND gate, we need 8 PET sub -dabs. And trustees interact with each uh, PET sub -dab and run each of them to completion. After PETs are completed, the output is asserted by trustee 1 back to the absentia DAP. And the final output is decrypted by the trustees. At the end of the protocol, Alice and Bob can retrieve the decrypted result and the funds are transferred to the trustees. So here is how the payments work in Absentia. We implement a simple proof of concept payment scheme and we also note that, of course, more elaborate schemes are possible. Alice and Bob pay trustee 1 and trustee 2 upon completion of the protocol. They can also deposit and withdraw E. So if they hold more, the excess amount can be withdrawn anytime. They should also deposit enough funds for the protocol to begin. Once the protocol begins, the funds for the fee are locked in escrow within the contract. If the protocol reaches finality, the funds are transferred to the accounts of trustee 1 and trustee 2. However, if the protocol times out without reaching finality, the fees are returned to Alice and Bob. In this case, we can know where exactly mix and match protocol stopped and which trustee aborted. An enhanced incentive scheme might pay trustees gradually for each step of the protocol they complete and slash if they abort. This way, the trustees financially commit to completing the protocol in a timely fashion. We also provide measurements for a single NAND gate with two trustees. Absentia is implemented in Solidity and Truffle's local network is used to deploy and test the contracts. In this table, you can see the cost of deploying Absentia's two contracts and one library and also running the functions in our system. The costs are given in terms of gas and its corresponding value in USD. The gas costs are as reported in Truffle's local network. So the first contract, EC, is our elliptic curve library. The second one, mix and match, corresponds to the absentia DAP. And uh, the third one, PET, corresponds to PET sub -dap. In each row, you can see which participant calls that function. It is also important to note that many functions are run more than once. When we compare the cost for deployment of each contract, mix and match is the most expensive. 
The most extensive operation is the function called create row, which creates two pet contracts. We are using the factory design pattern for this. And also, as I have already mentioned, trusty one runs most of the functions. And here, the first table in the slides shows the cost per participant. Again, the total number of transactions and the total cost of the functions run by Trusty1 is the highest. The second table shows how Absentia scales in different settings. If we want to evaluate another gate, Els and Bob still perform the same number of transactions, but nearly all of the rest of the functions are run twice as many times. And when we go back to the single gate setting, Introducing another trustee is not as expensive. Each additional trustee has a marginal cost equal to trustee two's cost in the first table in this slide. And here are some takeaways. Our system is fully functional. As our measurements show, it is too expensive to be practical on Ethereum today. And no one has benchmarked this before, and one of our aims was to understand how expensive it was going to be. In order to address the high cost of our system, we looked at the alternatives to Ethereum for deploying. And layer 2 optimistic rollups are the best fit for reducing the gas. Now I will talk about Absentia on layer 2. A layer 2 technology called a rollup targets gas costs. So in Ethereum, every transaction is executed and thus validated by every node. And in a rollup, transactions are executed by off-chain nodes called validators. Arbitrum is a layer 2 solution that operates an optimistic rollup on Ethereum. Validators or trustees compute the transactions off-chain and assert the result. Validators try to convince the Ethereum network that the result of the transaction execution is correct without the Ethereum nodes having to execute it. And also, anyone can profit by pointing out an incorrect result. So, in order to experiment with Arbitrum, we implemented only the PET submodule as a standalone contract. And this table compares the cost of deploying the PET subdep and running its functions on Ethereum's common testnet and on layer 2 with Arbitrum. Note that the numbers are slightly different than the tables that I have shown in the previous slides as, they, as the previous ones were deployed in a private network. And there is a significant difference between the gas costs on Ethereum testnet and on Arbitrum. So a runoff pet on Ethereum costs around 483 USD, while on Arbitrum the cost is not more than 30 USD. So in this use case, Arbitrum reduces Ethereum gas costs by 94%. In conclusion, we have shown in this work that Ethereum can complement secure function evaluation by enabling coordination between the participants, by providing incentives for them with its payment scheme, and it also enforces correctness. And given the recent de developments in Ethereum concerning performance and scalability, we believe that it was an appropriate time to benchmark how expensive secure function evaluation is on Ethereum. And we have seen that Absentia proves that this concept works. It establishes a lower bound and sets a new research challenge. So one of the next questions can be, how many gates can be evaluated under a certain threshold, like for example $100, as we learned from our measurements that a single NAND gate right now costs thousands of dollars. And as for the future work, uh, we can uh, explore the latest secure multi-party computation techniques. And Sigma protocols can be replaced with succinct zero-knowledge proofs. And we also know that layer 1 and layer 2 technologies will continue progressing. So 
so this is the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. You can also reach us at the contact information that we have provided in this slide. Thank you very much.